So let's talk a bit about Chainlink, Oracles, Oracle Pools, and why I think both Ergo and Cardano will replace Chainlink as the go-to Oracle solution, and how this could be a 100x investment opportunity for those in the know. To do this, we're gonna cover Ergo and Cardano's Oracle solution, Oracle Pools, why only Ergo and Cardano can implement them, and why they're better than Chainlink's Oracle solution. Then we'll put it all together to see how it's a 100x investment opportunity. If you don't know what Oracles, Oracle Pools, or Ergo is, don't worry, this video has you covered. I also want you to keep in the back of your head through this video that one of the main creators of Oracle Pools and Ergo is also a co-founder of Chainlink that left possibly due to the project not going the right direction. Now this video is going to get a little technical, but I'll keep it consumable and I'll use diagrams. So sit back, relax, smash like, and let's start with the basic question. What is an Oracle? So one of the key aspects of blockchain technology is that it can automatically execute transactions and contracts without any middlemen. For example, I could have one of these contracts in the form of flood insurance with an insurance company. The only problem is who says when there has been a flood? The insurance company? Me? It couldn't be either because we don't trust each other. So we need a third party to supply us the information. The person providing the data on the floods in this example is what we call an oracle. To define it in blockchain industry terms, oracles are simply a mechanism that brings a piece of data from outside of the blockchain onto the blockchain. This data is referred to as off-chain data and the provider of the information is called an oracle. Now the problem with this simple concept is that if the off-chain data comes from a single oracle, it could become subject to that single oracle's nefarious desires. In our flood insurance example, the weather data provider could be in cahoots with the insurance company and have an incentive to provide bad data so that the insurance company doesn't have to pay me out after a flood. There's also a chance that the Oracle is just outright not that good at providing reliable data, in turn reducing the usefulness of the data they provide. This not being able to trust the data source problem we're talking about is what the blockchain industry refers to as the Oracle problem, which to summarize in a sentence is how to get reliable and useful information from the real world onto the blockchain in a decentralized and secure manner. The solution that addresses this problem the best will be worth hundreds of billions of dollars as real world data is required for the vast majority of financial transactions, whether it's traditional finance or decentralized finance. Now Chainlink has a novel solution to the Oracle problem that has worked relatively well thus far, but Cardano and Ergo have a solution called Oracle Pools that are simpler, cheaper, more secure and faster than Chainlink. We'll talk about this more in the next section where we go through how these Oracle solutions work. Check the mic and make sure it sound right. Let's start with Chainlink. We're going to use a simple example of two people betting on a hypothetical boxing match using a smart contract on Ethereum that calls for an oracle on Chainlink. Let's say this boxing match is between Tyson Fury and Mike Tyson just for the sake of ease. Step 1. Person A bets person B 1 ETH that Mike Tyson will win against Tyson Fury and they make a smart contract on Ethereum outlining this bet. This smart contract will call on Chainlink for the outcome of the match as a data point. This request to Chainlink will include the exact parameters of the request, such as which oracles the people betting would like to use and the other crucial details. This step will also include the payment, which means exchanging Ethereum for Chainlink's Link token and then sending that to Chainlink's Ethereum wallet. Step two, the Chainlink protocol then develops a corresponding contract within its ecosystem called an SLA or service level agreement, which is just a copy of the request sent to Chainlink on the Ethereum blockchain. Step three, this SLA contract then creates three more subcontracts, a reputation contract, an order matching contract, and an aggregating contract. The order matching contract undertakes a bidding process to find the Oracle nodes that will serve as the contract for the right price. The reputation contract will remove any Oracle providers from those identified with a poor reputation. And the aggregating contract will come back too because that's involved later in the process. I know this is getting a bit complex, but it's important to know this to see why Oracle pools are just so much better. So bear with me. Step four, these Oracle nodes selected after the bidding process and reputation vetting will then send the request for data to the data providers as outlined in the requesting contract. This is done automatically through the use of Chainlink's open source software, Chainlink Core. Step five, the data is then provided from the data providers to the Oracle nodes who pass it into the aggregating contract. This contract will take the information provided by all of the Oracle nodes, average it out and remove outliers to get the right answer. In our boxing scenario, let's say it's Mike Tyson who was won. Once the SLA has received an output from the aggregating contract, it is then passed through to the original Ethereum contract and the smart contract the pair implemented for the bet on the boxing match can be executed, with person A receiving 1E. Now something I haven't mentioned in this process is the transaction fees for each step, as everyone needs to get paid at the end of the day. 
There's transaction fees when the ETH is initially converted to LINK, when the Oracle nodes are selected, and then when the Oracle nodes fetch the data from the data providers. Now this has been a very basic overview of how Chainlink works, and I would suggest looking into it further if you are interested in Chainlink. But now let's talk about the way simpler Oracle Pool solution that Cardano and Ergo are implementing. So Oracle Pools can only be implemented on blockchains that use an EUTXO model and not the accounts-based model that most blockchains implement, including Chainlink. I'm going to skip over why this is as the EUTXO versus accounts-based model is an immensely complex topic I'll leave for another video. All you need to know for this video is that only Cardano and Ergo can implement Oracle pools. So how do they work? Essentially, a group of people supplying data will get together and form an Oracle pool. This group could be any size from a handful of data providers up to thousands in size. Once this happens, they become Oracles. Each member of this pool will supply data to the pool from their own source. The Oracle pool will then output a single data point that is an aggregate of the data provided by the pool. Each of these pools are set up with their own system of governance that can either be centrally controlled by members or automatically controlled by a smart contract. This governance means that each Oracle pool can set up its own rules for its members to comply with, as well as punishments for failing to comply with those rules. These rules could range from slashing state crypto to expulsion of pool members. The governance can also prevent members from uploading data and thus spending ERG if the pool itself hasn't been paid enough to upload this data. Also note that each member of an Oracle pool can be a member of another Oracle pool and provide different types of data. Now as each of these pools could be competing with other pools to be the primary choice for users, each pool is incentivized to have a great track record and govern itself in such a way that users trust the pool. Oracle pools can further this trust though by going full inception and make Oracle pools where each individual member of the pool is itself another Oracle pool. This nesting of Oracle pools is theoretically limitless and the more nesting there is, the greater the reliability of the data due to there being more individual data providers. Also, if somebody wants to access data from a specific Oracle pool or a single Oracle provider, it can be done with this system. Now the only transaction cost to data providers here is the cost of uploading their data to the Oracle pool. From here, given that the blockchain is the EUTXO blockchain, that data point provider can be used in future transactions without having to be processed again, like it would need to be on Chainlink. So using our previous boxing match example, let's go through how Oracle pools work on Ergo, but this applies to Cardano as well. Step one, person A bets person B one Erg that Mike Tyson will win. They create a smart contract reflecting this and specify that they want Oracle Pool 51A's data point. They know that Oracle Pool 51A has 100 individual nodes and multiple nested levels of Oracle Pools, and the pool has a solid performance history, so it's secure enough for their purposes. Step 2. Their smart contract then collects this data point once the match data is submitted and executes itself, paying person A one ERC. It's just like a little bit of a simpler process. This was also a relatively brief overview of the Oracle pool solution, although it is a far simpler process than Chainlink solution in general. We'll talk about this more in the next section though, where we compare these two Oracle solutions. So let's start with the key points for Chainlink. It's got a proven track record. It's quite expensive to use. It's mechanically very complex and it's vulnerable to well-funded attacks. This is something I didn't quite talk about too much for the sake of time. The reputation is based significantly off how much link is staked by the Oracle nodes. So if they can stake more, they get greater reputation. So if they're rich, it's much easier for them to have a good reputation. It's a query based Oracle system and the link token doesn't need to exist. Now this last point is pretty controversial, but essentially Chainlink can do everything it does if it was inbuilt to the Ethereum blockchain, as in the link token doesn't really need to exist, but that's for another day. Let's look at the key points for Oracle pools. They're not widely implemented yet. They're mechanically quite simple. They're resistant to attacks through governance and layering pools. Integrated to a layer one blockchain, not like a separate blockchain like Chainlink. They're very inexpensive to use. They're a data stream as opposed to a query based system, which means that their data will stay on chain and be easily accessible forever. And it won't cost more to access that data. So to summarize, Chainlink has been great for crypto and it isn't a bad solution at all, but it is expensive, complex, slow, and potentially not the most secure solution. Whereas Oracle pools are a new, somewhat unproven technology that are simpler, more secure, faster, and integrated to the layer one blockchain. They also create a permanent repository of data on chain. Now look, I think honestly, Oracle pools will be the predominant provider of Oracle information in future. I don't think that Chainlink will entirely disappear though. I think it's similar to electric cars versus combustion engine cars right now. We know combustion engines are the go-to solution right now, but everyone knows which solution will be the main one in future. 
But now this leads an interesting question about Oracle pools. How are they a 100x opportunity? So let's start looking at the value of the market Oracle pools could address, otherwise known as the total addressable market or TAM for short. If we take the current total market cap of the Oracle providers in the crypto space, which is 4.69 billion, and add this to the big data industry's $300 billion market cap, we have a TAM of about 305 billion with an annual growth rate of above 10%. Now my thought process here is that the blockchain oracles will start to be used for a minority of traditional big data solutions, but I don't expect them to take over this industry, at least not in the near future. I expect to see oracles becoming the main source of big data in developing economies, especially those that are seeing crypto adoption already, partially because they are required for DeFi that may be occurring in the area, but also because it provides a stable source of income for those in developing economies income that is more secure than regular money. As a result of all of this, if Oracle pools can take over 5% of the TAM I've outlined, this would equate to greater than 100x growth in Oracle pool usage. And the great news is the blockchain lead in the charge on Oracle pools is cheap as heck right now. So if you're looking for an undervalued token, I strongly suggest you look into Ergo, starting with my original video on Ergo where I talk about everything it does other than Oracle pools. Other than that, there are these like amazing videos made by some random good looking dude that uh, has some really good information in them. You should check them out. Uh, I might be biased on that one, but thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.